Connecticut's recently approved medical marijuana law won't take effect for several months, but a distributor from Arizona is hoping to get a jump start on the market. An empty marijuana dispensing machine is currently on display on a Pratt Street storefront in downtown Hartford. Dr. Bruce Bedrick is CEO of Kind Clinics and Medbox Inc. They build themselves as a global leader in automated biometrically controlled dispensing systems. He is hoping his presence will get state regulators to consider his Medbox system as a distribution system for medical marijuana here in Connecticut. We spoke to him about how it works down at his 55 Pratt Street location. All right, Dr. Bedrick, let's just start off with um, a demonstration of how this machine works. Okay, uh, I'm going to demo this for you. Uh, now, you have to understand that this machine, the Medbox and the Medibles machine, uh, will be behind the counter in the dispensary. So a pharmacist or a technician will be the one interacting with the technology and the dispensing system, not the patients and not the consumers. So, so that they won't right have there eliminates any thoughts or concerns people have about um, who might have access to that, that is correct. That is correct. And there's also typically no cash involved with this in the machine or anything like that. Typically what happens on your first visit in to the dispensary once you've already acquired your medical marijuana ID card from the state is you'll come in and register okay now during the registration process we'll take your fingerprints and you will be given a card a medicine dispensing system card this is a very HIPAA compliant card if you lose it no personal information will be given to anybody else this along with your fingerprint that we have taken ensures that the patient is the only person that can basically retrieve the medicine Okay, so this is how it would go. The technician or the pharmacist would touch the screen. The patient would insert their card, not necessarily in this machine, but on a, a countertop model. It'll ask for the fingerprint reader, which is also on a countertop model. It then identifies the patient and it identifies how much credit they have that has been pre uh, preloaded onto the card. And then uh, what will happen is the patient will choose what they want. If they want an edible or some infused product or an accessory, they'll be able to get it from our refrigerated uh, Medibles machine or they'll direct the pharmacist to retrieve it from the, from the Medibles machine. But in terms of medicine, uh, the pharmacist will uh, have all of the strains in front of him. He can page through and then what happens is uh, it, it will pick up a strain and he will give you an anecdote, a description, what condition it's good for, um, uh, what the test results were after testing, uh, how it was cultivated. You'll have a picture of the strain. You'll have an inventory. Okay? Yeah, so that's one thing I don't think people know is that there are, there are many different strains, I guess, that are applicable to different uh, correct. sections. Correct. That, that's correct. Uh, without getting into great detail, there's different types of hybridized strains. There's different species of the plant of medical marijuana, sativa, indica, and they have of all different names and different blends. Uh, and you can see the, sc the screen timed out. Um, but what would happen, and I'll go through it again very quickly for you. Uh, it's tough when you're answering questions. But Good for people to see a second time. Yeah, sure. So you're picking medicine out. Let's just pick this. Uh, it has this, if you pick the inventory, okay, uh, you can accept that you, the pharmacist has the opportunity to reconfirm with the patient that this is what they wanted, accept or deny. However, this is the important part. Uh, part of our checks and balances, what makes us so safe and secure and compliant is that uh, the software that is part of the med box and part of our patent will not dispense to a patient who seeks to get more than their allotted amount, nor will it dispense to anybody who has violated any of the fields in the software, meaning if you're uh, doctor recommendation form has expired or if your medical marijuana ID card has expired. Okay. That in combination with the fingerprint scanner, uh, the ID card, uh, and the fact that a pharmacist or a technician is actually dispensing the medicine makes this the most legally compliant medical marijuana technology dispensing system um, around, period, so in the marketplace. So the doctor is the one who sets how much and how often? That's a different discussion. The doctor at, in no state currently right now sets that recommendation. That is usually uh, written into the law or the rules. And, and it's my understanding in Connecticut that has not been written into the law, so it will be up to the Department of Consumer Protection to write that in. Where does the uh, marijuana come from? Uh, in, in Connecticut, it will become from producers. Uh, part of the law uh, written that there will be a minimum of three and a maximum of ten producers cre uh, cultivating the medicine. And how many of these would there be in a state the size of Connecticut? Once again, we don't know. If you follow 
history in states that have become more regulated similar to Arizona, what they've done is they have chosen to take uh, a number of one medical marijuana dispensary for every 10 standard pharmacies. And, and they'd be, um, I'm sorry, they'd be in pharmacies or where would they be? No, no, these would, uh, okay, that's a good question. So these uh, dispensing systems uh, will be in separate dispensaries. Let's talk about the process for a moment. Uh, the law has been now been passed. It is now up to the Department of Consumer Protection to make the rules and regulations regarding the industry in Connecticut. At the same time or afterwards, different municipalities around the state will be making zoning regulations. Okay, uh, they will be making setbacks, things of that nature of where they think it is most appropriate to place the dispensaries and the cultivation facilities. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect that a regular pharmacies like a, a CVS or a Walgreens will uh, kind of incorporate this into it. These will be probably freestanding separate businesses, which is also good for the economy here. Our goal not to educate, and, and really, once again, that's, that's why we're here. We want to make Connecticut the best possible medical marijuana program in the country. Um, based on our experience, um, we know what works, we know what doesn't work, and we, try to, we want to re educate and reach out to as many people as we possibly can, from patients to doctors to pharmacists to legislators to law enforcement. You know, please contact me. Please go to kindclinics.com. Uh, contact me with any questions. I'm, I'm nothing. I want to be a resource and help as much as I possibly can. So you're being here in Connecticut now um, is just kind of a proactive. Totally, show we want we, we, we there's there is so much at stake for the state. We want to help as much as we can, and if we can, you know, guide things in the right direction for everybody involved, at, you know, with the patients being the center focus and uh, helping relieve, you know, discomfort and, and helping people's lives, um, which is, you know, at my core because. Cancer has touched my family, and this is so very important to me um, to be done the right way. Mm -hmm. So getting back to that, we're going to help as, uh, uh, as many people as possible. We want to educate as much as possible. And what our business objective is, is to help people that want to get into the, into the industry, whether it's for cultivation or it's for uh, opening up a dispensary. How uh, competitive is this business, and, and, and how lucrative is it? Um, it depends, uh, once again, it depends upon the state law and, and how many dispensaries they're going to authorize. So uh, what I can tell you is that um, it can be anywhere from mildly successful to very successful. And it's, it's very, very difficult for me to answer that question without having and knowing the rules and what the parameters are that the Department of Consumer Protection uh, is going to set out for the residents of, of Connecticut. Are, there, are you competing, though, against a lot of other uh, there are no There are no other technology manufacturers that you know, touch anything remotely close to what we do, partly, partly because of our patents. Um, uh, but I believe there are always other consultants, attorneys, um, books on people who can help you uh, make an application for a dispensary license and teach you how to um, run a store. Um, the question is, is why am I valuable besides all of my experience and my technology? And that answer is because we are the least riskiest on a lot of levels. We've opened approximately uh, 100 dispensaries for clients around the country and two in Canada, uh, of which none of them have been bothered by law enforcement, either state or federal, and there's been no crime around any, you know, involved in any of our dispensaries. Right, I was going to say, I mean, knowing Connecticut, I know people will say, well, what about when they're stocked? I mean, maybe someone's going to, you know, and here's mug another the thing. guy delivering it. And, and, well, mugging the guy delivering it is a whole other discussion uh, that's usually uh, under wraps and no one really knows what that's happening. But although these carry 50 strains, um, the medicine isn't stored in this 24-7. It's, it's here during the day. It's sealed in, uh, in pre-weighed packages. And at night, it goes into a safe even more so. Plus, you, you know, to, when you go into the dispensary, our dispensaries, you have, it's, they're very similar to doctor's offices. You walk in, it's a very nice reception area, then you are buzzed into the room that houses this behind the counter, which has tons of cameras, security, there's even security right here and cameras on here. Um, so in that context, uh, security is never really an issue with our technology. Um, and once again, you know, coming with us as your consultant, um, there are so many other things that we can offer people. Uh, uh, people don't understand there are so many um, uh, there's so many professionals that you need to put together as a team to make a successful application and to truly open a dispensary uh, and we have it all put together ready to go.
Dr. Bedrick tells me that looking at current statistics, there are approximately 350,000 patients in Connecticut who might qualify for the medical use of marijuana. Federal funds are set aside to help kids from being hungry when school is out, but not enough of them are taking advantage of it. We'll talk about why not coming up.